Okay, yeah, nice to meet you all. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not an AI guy, although I've dabbled a bit. Uh, you guys are all way smarter than me. I'm, a, I'm an IoT guy, and so my job is to try to get the, uh, the data into, um, you know, from the devices into a place where you guys can uh, do your analytics on it. And so today I'm going to talk about uh, IoT on the edge, or AI on the edge, and that's where, and what I'm going to show you is how we can push those AI models into small devices like the little Raspberry Pi I have running here today. So why would you want to do that? Um, why would you want to push those things out to the edge? Uh, the main ones are, are you know, uh, network connectivity. It's very expensive to push a whole bunch of images or video up into the cloud. And uh, to do the processing, it's better to, to do it out on the edge in the device itself. And it also gives you a, a tighter control loop with the devices themselves. So if, if you detect for some reason that something's wrong with your systems, you don't necessarily want to do that, you know, even though it'll be sub-second, it may be, you, you want to have that, as t that, that control loop as tight as possible with your machinery to be able to adjust the processing on it. So, so again, on the other side, uh, you know, if you're going to push these models out, uh, it's challenging uh, in the edge devices as well because uh, there, there's a kind of a, a skill set that's needed to run these, these devices. Uh, you know, somebody told me, you know, what do you need to be an IoT guy? Well, you need a lot of different skills, C, Python, Node. You know, you need to be able to build compact code and, and deal with real-time operating systems, Linux, all that kind of stuff, and it's, it, it, it's challenging. And, and so we're trying to, to break that down and make that easier. And so I'm just gonna move on. These are, so what, what we're offering with uh, IoT in the cloud is the ability for you to monitor all your devices out in the field and all your, um, and be able to push models out from a centralized location in the cloud. Uh, and then be able to monitor those devices from the cloud, and then be able to bring up and have infinite compute and infinite storage for the training of your models uh, up in Azure. And again, on the edge, we, we have the low latency. You, we, we allow you to connect into uh, your machinery uh, with uh, you know, multiple protocols. There's a lot of brownfield protocols out there. Uh, you guys might not deal with them. I have to deal with them a lot. You know, uh, Things like Modbus and Profinet and all, all these different uh, protocols. Well, we have we have ways of getting that data in and then get it uh, up to the cloud where you guys can do your analysis. And the last thing that uh, Edge offers is it allows you to do uh, your analysis um, on the data on the Edge so that you don't need to pass sensitive data up into the cloud. And so it's sort of like passing metadata up. Uh, you can say, well you know, something is wrong with the machine without passing that sensitive IP of the machine, uh, data of that machine up into the cloud. So this, uh, this talks a little bit about our, our, our IoT uh, edge solution. I'm just gonna move along because I, I want to, uh, to kind of make sure I get through all the content and, and show you the real stuff, the demos and that type of thing. So. So the cloud companies have been very good at um, uh, showing you how to get data from your from your things up into uh, up into the cloud, where you uh, you derive asset, uh, insights out of it, and then send messages back to your de uh, to your devices. So that's a pretty familiar model to uh, I, I imagine almost everyone here. What we're showing you now is the ability to train up in the cloud and do advanced uh, functionality up in the cloud, and then push those modules down into the edge device itself. So if we look here, uh, what we're seeing on the left is the edge device. Of course, the big cloud, which is Azure, and we have the IoT Hub. These are the different types of uh, functionality that you can now push as modules down to your edge device. And, and so we have machine learning, which uh, um, uh, and cognitive services, which I'm going to show you today, a little example of that. Um, Event Grid, which is it's more of like a um, uh, a tool for PubSub out out on the edge. Uh, functions where you can put some business logic, stream analytics, where you can do um, uh, kind of grouping, averages, min, max, all those types of things. So. So that's a very useful one if you wanted to, say, have 60 one-second uh, intervals coming in and then do a, uh, you know, a round or an average of it 
uh, every minute and just send one message up. So that tool will allow you to do that. If you want to store the data out on the edge, you can use SQL Server as well and, and push that down uh, as a container as well. So, so how does that all work? We have a container registry up in the cloud. And what you, what you do is you, train, you, you, you build all your business logic up in the cloud, you test it uh, up in the cloud, and you can even you know, use your DevOps facilities up in the cloud, but then you containerize it, push it up into uh, a container registry. Uh, you know, it could be uh, the Azure container registry, it could be Docker, uh, whatever you like. Then what you do is you develop a de uh, deployment manifest which says, you know, which things do you want to send down and how do you want to route the messages through them. You send that down to the device, which then pulls those, uh, pulls those down uh, into your edge device and gets them running. And so you may say, well, why would you want to do all of that? Why don't you just connect into the device itself? Well, it's not uncommon to have, uh, you know, uh, scenarios where you have a thousand or 10,000 or even a million devices out in the field and centralized management of this is a big deal. So with those modules that I just showed you, th those are the standard ones that Microsoft provides, but we're, we're going to have a, a, a marketplace of them as well. And you know, this might be a, a good place for you to put some of your trained models as well up into this marketplace. Uh, could be, you know, some people, uh, some uh, companies may offer them free of charge. Other ones, uh, you know, it might be a good revenue stream for you as well. So who's, who's using this stuff? Um, well, there's some familiar names here from, from, uh, from the Calgary area, you know, with Schneider and Rockwell, uh, Chevron. DGI is a, is a, uh, uh, is a, a drone maker and, and they're actually using it as well. And we provide an API for that drone. And we can actually show how that drone can be flying uh, for over one field and using one machine learning model. And as it goes across into another field in an agriculture situation, it can actually download a different uh, ML model and then just keep going without even uh, stopping the drone. So it's pretty cool actually. So let's get in and take a little uh, look at some of this stuff. Uh, I'm gonna show you two demos. Uh, first one is uh, Vulcan Steel. Uh, I'll be kind of using a, a click through. It's not actual real, uh, really connected up to Vulcan Steel, but it really shows you how you can use it. Vulcan Steel is a, one of our customers and they are using this functionality. It's just, uh, it's more just being upfront. It's more of a click through. But then I'm also gonna show you how you can you know, use uh, uh, you know, a Raspberry Pi, uh, a Sense Hat, which is a sensor, it's about a $30 sensor, and a USB camera. And you can uh, actually build these models really quickly and be able to try them out, show them to your manager, show them how, you know, they might be able to be, uh, you know, if you're in a production environment where you're building things or manufacturing, you could be taking pictures of the, uh, uh, the product as it goes through and running them through these models, this image detection, and being able to detect uh, flaws on the edge uh, as, as, those, uh, as those devices are being, or as those products are being made. So that's what I'm gonna show you. Let me just grab. All right. Okay. And my screen has shut off. Hard for me to see, but I will start. So I come into my portal in the morning, log in, and sorry, that is not looking right. There we go. And I was looking at my portal and I see an alert come in. It says, uh, you know, incorrect loading position. So I want to take a look at that. And so I click on it. And what it's showing me here uh, is it's got a square box and it's showing that they, they are trying to load some device or some steel bars uh, onto the back of a flatbed. What we're looking at is we have a camera on the back of a flatbed truck and it's looking down on the flatbed truck and it sees that they're piling two on top of each other, which is not uh, a safe situation. And so what we're gonna do, we'll go in, of course, we're gonna alert the su supervisor, which is good. But what we also notice, if we look in the background, 
is this guy here that's, that's further down the truck, he's not wearing a hard hat. And so that's not very, that's not very good. Uh, he should be wearing a hard, hard hat. And so what I'm gonna do is click on this uh, retrain model and I'm gonna go, um, no protective helmet detected. And I'm just gonna mark that, uh, that device. Uh, or sorry, that picture as having you know, someone in it that's not wearing pr their protective headgear right. Now we're not gonna worry about telling the machine you know, what's wrong with the headgear. We're gonna let that machine figure that out as we pass down you know, 100 or 1,000 of these images. So we pass them. Now we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna retrain the model. And so I'm just gonna go in and maybe beef it up a little bit. And I'm gonna, so right now what I'm doing is uh, maybe I've accumulated, you know, a hundred of these different images during the week. Now I'm going to train that model uh, out in the field. So there we go. It's trained. Now I'm gonna deploy it. So when I deploy the model, what it's doing is it is um, pushing that model up into the container registry and it's telling our IoT hub, which is sort of our point of ingest into Azure, to push that model out to all those devices in the field. And so it's done that, and now I can go in and I can test it. And so when I test now, I see that it is now seeing the guy uh, in the back without the hard hat. So the reason I show you this is to, um, you know, just get your mind thinking about the different types of things that you can do as well. So this is a real life one. I'm gonna show you, uh, or sort of, this is like a click through of what we're doing in real life. Now I'm gonna show you just a little model that I've deployed on a Raspberry Pi. Just real quick question, if I may. Yeah. You didn't draw a bounding box on that guy? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I allowed it, it, it should be able to see faces, uh, you know, the AI should, and be able to, to tone in on that. Yeah, I think he's missing a, um, a belt around his, you know what I mean? But very good questions. I'm not getting away with anything with a, a room of a, a, a hundred data scientists. I can tell that already. So, all right. So I'm. Could you it a little hard to hear down the hall? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, that's tricky. Okay. All right. How am I doing? All right. 22 minutes left. Okay. Fair enough. So what I'm going to show you today, I pulled uh, from, um, from this GitHub repository. And I'll, I'll share these slides. I don't know if Drew can put them out or, or not. But um, if, you, if you want to try that, it's available at this GitHub. So uh, GitHub repository. All right. So first of all, what I've done is I've gone into what's called Microsoft's um, Custom Vision uh, AI website. And I've uploaded a whole bunch of pictures of bananas and apples. And that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Uh, I'm going to train the model now. So I go out and I train. Uh, okay, nothing is, well, there we go. All right, let me just do something here. I'll make a slight change. Just call this a fruit. All right. Save and close. All right. So now I'm going to train. Oh, no. All right. Now I'm going to remove this. Oh, cancel. Oh, damn. I thought that said remove. One sec. Uh, delete. Maybe that will allow me to train. Okay, so now it's out and it's training. And so it can, it can go out and it can, well, I can cl click on get started if I want to and actually let it train. Do, let's just assume I've already got it trained. Then what I can do is I can click on this export button. Oh, it's not gonna let me, anyway. I'm not going to waste time showing this, but this will allow me to export files in multiple different formats. formats. Uh, one of which, uh, you know, like is TensorFlow. Uh, what was it going to do? Oh, there it is. Let me just try again. There we go. So here are the different ways you can export the models. There's CoreML, TensorFlow. Uh, 
Onyx, and then Dockerfile, which is the one I'm using today, because I want to push the model out. And so I could train it that way. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to bring up, there we go, I've lost my mouse. This tool. And so this tool is, is what's called Visual Studio Code. And what I've done is I've, for those of you that are familiar with GitHub, I have cloned that repository out of GitHub that I showed you earlier. Uh, and I brought that up in this, uh, in this tool, Visual Studio Code. And so what I'm gonna wanna do is I, I click on this env variable here, and I'm gonna put in just information about my, uh, about my container, where I wanna push my model when it's done. And so I put this in here, it has a password, and this allow me to uh, compile and push this up as a module into, uh, in, up into the cloud. So if I look, this has three different modules. Oops, it has a camera, camera capture, and so I'm gonna be using this little camera here. It has a Im image classification, which is gonna use the, uh, the files that I exported out of that image classification. And then it has a sense hat display. And a sense hat is a small device, uh, or a small uh, sensor that I have. And I apologize for the people in the other room, you can't see it, but it's, it's on top of this Raspberry Pi here. And what I, uh, the reason I have it is it has like a little screen here and it, as it detects, it can show like an apple or an orange uh, on top of it. And so I have those in there. Uh, if, if I want to change, um, you know, my model, I can go in here and all I have to do is change with that export from the uh, previous screen, the labels and the model. I just change those in, in here and I could send it up. So, so that's where if I were to say, you know, be building glass and be looking at pictures of glass going by and then seeing a crack, I, if, I, if I train that in that custom vision AI website, I could just change them here in this PB that I've downloaded from GitHub and that would, uh, that would, that's all you have to do to, to make it available. So now, now that that's done and it's ready to go, what I do is I go down to um, the deployment template. It's this one, yep, this one. And I build and push the edge solution. So once I build and push it, it's gonna push it up into the container registry. And it's also gonna create a deployment file for me. And I can come up and see that in the config file. And, and there, there's instructions for all of this in that GitHub site. And you can create a custom de a deployment for a single device. I can click on that. It's gonna ask me which device I want you know, that's configured in the OT Hub, and it's gonna push that out. So I'm not gonna do that necessarily. I'm just showing you how you go through it. If we look down here, these are my actual devices. And, I, and the one that I have right here is called my image classification device. And you can see the modules that are, uh, that are on it right now. And you can actually uh, right click on it and start monitoring it. Cloud device messages. So now the messages are gonna be over here. All right, so um, now it is monitoring. So, so what I wanna show you with that one is that you can connect to your devices uh, and visualize your devices program your devices all from one place. You can even simulate in this device, in this environment as well. So I'm gonna switch over to my Raspberry Pi. Is it running? Uh, looks like I need to reboot it. Oh, I'm just gonna reboot it. <laughs> the problem is it's, it's more than capable with the CPU to do this processing, but it's a little underpowered for all the stuff I have connected up to it. And so that's, that's what we were seeing there. So while this is booting up, is there any questions so far? Okay, so th the question was, uh, what if you are trying to detect something that is not very common or very rarely seen? Uh, how, do you, how do you do that? And uh, so Masa kind of answered it, but, but he also mentioned that uh, you, know, you could use, I believe, uh, video games or, or simulate uh, some of these things. Is, is that what you were suggesting? Yeah, or movies, whatever. Or movies. Maybe have it be like a jam, 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 j
Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Let's move on. So, I have deployed that uh, that model down to this device. Um, for the people in the other room, what I'm going to do is I have a sheet of paper that has a, a banana and an apple on it. And then what I do is, uh, Masa, can you come over for a sec? Let me just hold this up just like that so people can see it. I know it's tricky. So if, if I, uh, let's just see. Yeah, there you go, a banana. <laughs> and then I can put a, so this is running on the device, an apple. And so what it's done uh, for the people in the other room is there's a little display on the device. And as I, um, uh, yeah. oh, sure. And so, so when I, when I showed uh, the camera a picture of the banana, uh, it is able to detect the banana and show it on the screen. And then when I show an apple, let me know when it comes up. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Um, yeah, and and if I go back to my tool, um, oh, well, sorry, uh, I have to change. Anyway, I don't think it's actually okay. So it's not up and running. But anyway, what, I'm not going to go on and try to figure it out, but what it should be showing you here in the bottom is the JSON messages coming in. And so that's just an example of how, you know, you could be, you know, working on, uh, you know, large files like one megabyte files on the edge and then just sending up light JSON that's saying the probability of it being an apple or an orange. So you don't need to send the whole message up, process it. And uh, you know what I mean? It, it, it seems that in the IoT world, it's network connectivity that's the problem, not, uh, uh, not the ability to process on the edge. And so it's pushing that down to the, in, to the edge. Any other questions? Well, that's good. I think I might have even finished her. Any, any from the other room? Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. For a system like this, what are the memory requirements? Okay, so the question is, what are the memory requirements? And, and so, obviously, it, it will work on a, on a Raspberry Pi, but you've seen that, uh, you know, I had like six different, uh, different types of containers you can send down. And also, your models could be very complex as well. And so, you know, I, I think what I wanted to show with this is just the low end, but you're going to have to experiment with the devices. Yeah. And you had the banana. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't the question is exactly how much did this one take? I don't know. It, it, you know it's within the specs of the Raspberry yeah. Pi, but sorry, I, I really don't know. Okay? Yeah. Good question. Yes. Okay, so so if you look, um, you know, a, a lot of companies like I deal with uh, Oh, sorry. The question was how do you match the model to the device? And uh, so what I'm going to say is it, probably not what you want to hear. There's, there's no like formula or anything. It, it is, it, it, you have to test it out and you have to try it. Uh, the good news is that some of the large device makers like HPE uh, e or, or Moxa or some of these guys that make big gateways, uh, they have different sizes, you know, right from Atom processors right up to blades that have 64 CPUs in them. Uh, even up to our Azure stack, which is like a huge implementation on the edge. And so you really have to test them out. And, and then, um, you know, I would suggest, you know, if you're working with a, um, uh, if you're working with a device maker, obviously don't buy 10 devices until you've tried it out. And, and you know, I would even push them a little bit and, and say, hey, can you send me one? I want to try it out. Or can you bring three by and let, let's try the, all three out. You know what I mean? And see where it sits. And so what you find sometimes with these gateways when you put them out in the field is all of a sudden people say, oh, I have a computer running out in the field. Maybe I can run something else on it as well. And so you maybe want to put a little extra uh, resources into that system. Oh, 
so deploying to Android, did you say? Yeah. So right now we support Linux and uh, like certain builds of Linux. We don't support it for Edge just yet. Uh, yeah, we do have APIs for it, but I, I don't believe Edge is running on, on it. But um, if it was Linux, then you wouldn't have a problem for sure. Okay, so the question is, uh, is there um, the ability to use the AI to uh, look at a series of pictures and say, uh, perhaps look at a, a person live, lifting incorrectly as opposed to just single pictures? And so pass that over to Masa. The video indexer is another API. Okay, fair enough. Okay, well that's good. Uh, how am I doing? Five minutes left, so that just gives enough time for us to switch around and if, unless there's any questions. No? Okay, thank you very much.